If you want to lose weight, if you want to get in shape, if you want to get fit, and you want to make sure that it happens and that you can maintain it, in other words, you want the best odds, nothing is more effective than hiring a good guy, a good coach, a good trainer. By the way, this is true for any personal growth. If you want to move in a direction where your life changes, having a mentor or a guide is your best bet. Across the board, right? Yeah, what if you know everything? Man? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big problem. It's tough. If yeah. you think you know everything. I, I, this was, I think this was the, the greatest challenge we had when we were writing programs, knowing this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was knowing that, you know, we're going to go out and create these programs for the masses, but deep down knowing that no matter how good, how much time we spend on thinking of all the possibilities, the variables. We're not going to compete with that. You, you can't. just can't. You can't compete no. with... Now, thank God we had the podcast to complement the program. So most of the audience that mm -hmm. follows the programs also hears our advice. And so it's kind of like having a coach through it, but it's not the same. It's not the same as having me standing there in front of you, having a plan for us to do something today. And then I watch the way you move. I can tell the way your posture is when you mm -hmm. first walk in. I can ask you questions like, how did you yep. sleep last night? How did you eat yesterday? Yep. What's going on? And then go, oh, okay. I need to make a pivot. Look, it's like, think back to when you were a kid, right? I mean, um, we all took the the, the the classes that were required, you know, math, English, history, whatever. And there's that one teacher, right? Everybody can think of that one teacher that just, not only did they, did they stand out, but they made you love learning something that you didn't know you had a love for. That was the teacher, right? That was the, the, the guide. That's what a good trainer will do. A good trainer doesn't just know exercises and form and technique. They don't just know how to change those exercises or your form and technique based on how you move. They don't just know diet or how to change it based mm -hmm. off of you. They know a good coach or trainer knows how to guide you in an effective way. And that is so different from person to person that mm -hmm. it took me. I loved being a trainer. I knew I wanted to be a, a trainer and work in fitness at a very young age. Like it was a passion of mine. I mean, I, I'm going to be quite honest with you. It took me a decade to get good yeah. at being a trainer because it's so nuanced. There's so much individual variance. It took me, I mean, before that, I knew exercise and diet and stuff like that, but it took me a decade to get effective at getting people to make these changes and then keep these changes for the rest of their life. So that's how yeah. that's how hard it is. But when you find someone like that, like there's no... Huh. There's no program that we could create that would ever com compete. Yeah, well, once you graduated past like just giving them a plan and educating them and kind of having that in front of them and just peering more into their behaviors and trying to really dig into that from the very beginning and find out what those buttons are that kind of motivate them or, you know, might cause a setback. Like you, you, you get to understand how they interact on a daily basis mm -hmm. um you just become so much more effective like immediately it's so funny you went this direction because we just got back from the coaching con and this was one of the things that i was expressing to so many of these great coaches and trainers that are like and so inspiring seeing some of them and the traction they've made already in their first couple of years of being a trainer but like me having to remind them like hey S calm down dude you're on year two right yeah. now yeah like you guys see the the success of the business but what you don't realize is that a majority of that success is not the, oh, we, we we figured out podcasting or we understood sales funnels or we built this great website. It's like, no, it had nothing to do. What it really had everything to do with was the 15 plus years that led into that. I was almost two decades deep into fitness before yes. I started the podcast. I said, so yeah. you guys are doing so good already. You, you got to be patient. Now, granted, you, uh, you're they're probably going to be a lot better than I was a lot sooner because we were like, figuring it out for ourselves yeah. in the trenches, learning through trial and error and yep. just repetition through client clients. Hopefully we've provided and created enough good, solid content, especially now with the coaching program to help accelerate that growth. But you got to be patient. Some of this stuff just takes time. It takes time yep. to see the same kind of problems continue to, to reoccur with your clients to know like, oh, okay, I, I, I know what to do. And then the next level to that is, how do you learn to forecast it before they even That's hit those the things? I was just, I was yeah. waiting to say that. Like that, when you can forecast to somebody, here's what you're going to notice at this point. And right. here's what the challenges you're going to run into. And here's probably what's going to happen. And here's what we're going to do. And then they experience it. You've earned so much trust. Uh, and the person goes, okay, I see that you know what you're talking about. And this isn't. And to have the confidence, Sal, to let the, like, allow the client, because here's a mistake that like yeah. earlier trainers make. You get all the knowledge and you know that that's the wrong way. This is the right way. 
And part of the art of being able to coach people is to, when you first meet somebody, if you, if you're combative and you argue with them or you tell them how wrong they are, like they're going to put a wall up or they're going to bounce on you. So there's this like this delicate dance that you have to do with a client of like kind of nodding your head when you know that's not going to fucking work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, okay, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then knowing like, okay, this, now I know what to be prepared for because I want them to, to relax, let their guard down, you know, like build that trust with each other. I haven't earned that trust yet. So then, I'll, okay, nod my head yes, and they go, okay, well, you know, here's are some of the things that we might run into, you know, and you do, 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 you start laying out all yeah. the stuff, and then you let it unfold, and like, shit, that's exactly what you well, said was going to happen. Well, <laughs> what's your goal, right? Is your goal to, to be right, or is your goal to help get this person um, to long-lasting, sustainable progress, yes. results, have a good relationship with fitness and nutrition? If your goal is to win or to be right in terms of arguing with them, well, then, okay, go argue with them, tell them how wrong they are. But you're not going to succeed at what your real you're not goal is. Get buy in, yeah. No, man. I mean, I you know, I told I tell that one story so many times because uh, I, hopefully this this woman listens to the podcast and hears how bad I feel. But I blew someone out once because I was right. I was right. She was wrong. She was she wasn't telling me the truth. Whatever. And she left. She never came back. And within a few days, I'm like, what have I done? Like, yeah, I, I got I told her the truth, and she figured out that I was right and whatever. But. Gosh, I Did hope I turn her off. Forever. Not only turn her off, I hope she might have never start tried again. Yeah, because I made her feel so bad. And what have I done? Like, did I succeed in anything except for making my ego and my pride feel better? So yeah, if your goal is to is to get that person to figure this out, first off, it takes a while. For the most part, very rarely do you get that client who just kind of figures it out and falls into it. That's like the perfect student. Very rare. Mm -hmm. Usually, it takes a while. Sometimes it takes way longer than you anticipate. I mean, I remember one guy I trained, you know, and he was consistent with me. It, it took us over three years to lose 30 pounds, but it wasn't the, th he didn't lose the, th the 30 pounds of three year period. He lost it in the last like four months. So it was like t over two and a half years of nothing. And then it was, it finally clicked at the end. By the way, he never gained it back. I'm still friends with him, right? This is at least 10 years ago. So that's, that's what you're dealing with when you're a coach or trainer. Now, if someone's listening and they're disheartened, here's the deal. Your odds without a good coach or trainer are almost 0%. That's just the data. The data will show you that when you go do this on your own, you try and figure this out, the fail rate is through the roof. Um, you know, luckily if you have like one of the reasons why we do so many podcasts every week is we know that there's people who are on this journey and we're like, okay, if we can be in their ear right. often, that is going to be at least a, 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 what it's like to be with a coach, to kind of hear these things being communicated and help keep those people moving in the right direction. But nothing will, nothing will ever replace. Speaking of that, coach. you got to share the, so when I was in Utah, I had uh, Jerry with me. And so she was still working and stuff with that. And she's like, oh, look, I just got this great email. And she read this email to me. I want Doug to read it to you guys because it's along these lines of us coaching people through the podcast. <clears throat> and, do you have it, Doug? Yeah, I do. Actually, it's uh, posted right here. Okay. Uh, his name is Kyle Saliba. I uh, hope he doesn't mind being shouted out on the show. Well, he was live, right? He was live. Okay, yeah. So, so that's fine. he goes, I was on the show a while ago in mid-November relating to my low testosterone, which concerned me, especially since I'm only 20 years old. Just wanted to send a check in as Adam requested I did on the call. Thanks to your advice, I got my vitamin D tested and it did indeed come back deficient. I implemented all your advice and did MAPS Anabolic and had my testosterone checked again recently. My testosterone numbers have doubled since the call, and I'm now in a healthy place. Wow. I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, that's phenomenal. So awesome. great. That's excellent. Uh, but, you know, uh, I don't remember. I think I kind of remember that, in fact. I remember he was a young kid. 20 years old. I remember yeah, that. Low testosterone. I think I remember him. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was. He originally was asking if he should get on hormone therapy. That's right. And right. we told him to do this first before he did something like that. Yes, yes, yes. And then that, so that's why it's such a, so, and I, I mean, again, for all the other younger, because it's wild that we have this conversation for 20 year olds now, but it's becoming super popular. I remember when we first started working with the, the hormone companies and I, that was like the most common DMs that I got were these 20 to 25 year olds that were coming back with low testosterone. And the answer is to not jump on to synthetic testosterone right away. The answer is first to check all these boxes before you, because at, at under 30, you shouldn't have to do that. No. If you're under 30 years old. Still young and resilient. Yeah. You yeah. should not have to have to use hormone therapy. Now, of course, there's always exceptions to the rules. So I'm not, I know it's a bit of an overgeneralization, but for the most part, if you are under the age of 30 
it's typically too soon to jump right to hormone. It's, it's usually nutrient deficiency and or um, lifestyle factors. Mm -hmm. And lifestyle for um, kids in their guys in their twenties now is radically different than what it was a few decades ago. Way less active, less sunlight, yeah, less no, deep sleep, no strength training. Sleep is all uh, you know being affected. Diet is uh, has, has changed radically over the last you know few decades. <laughs> and there's probably some environmental factors too. But I mean, doubled. Double the testosterone. That's yep. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's inc that's incredible. By the way, I got at the uh, the coaching event. I had a few uh, trainers approach me and say that they did our three day free training, and uh, one of them came up to me. Double sales. Double sales. Yeah, yeah. I heard all. Double <laughs> sales. Like I've doubled my sales since watching you guys teach how to present myself properly and how to you know teach how to how to present packages for training and stuff like that. So yeah, that watching that community grow right now has been fantastic yeah. and you know mm -hmm. i did get a chance to talk to a few that weren't in there and a lot of them was because they had just invested in the the coaching con and some other things and they didn't know that we have a, a payment option we can go monthly on that so yeah. it's not a huge burden and i said listen or just do the, the free three day well i mean too. bare minimum do the the free training that's why we put it out there but if you in, in, invest in the actual coaching program there's monthly payments on it and so far what we've done is almost everybody i know that's been inside that yeah. thing has seen an increase in their revenue that's significantly greater than the investment it was it just scratches from. the surface yeah. i mean yeah we just like put that out there because that's like the immediate like i can apply this right now to my business and i could see a return well there's just so much more you can do people watching and listening it's uh it's mindpumptrainercourse.com right doug did i get that right that's correct. Right. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Anabolic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I got to tell you guys about something funny too, by the way. Uh, my three-year-old, <laughs> get to my, about my son. Uh, by the way, I had the worst sleep of my life over the weekend, which I'll tell you guys in a second. <laughs> bro, and I feel like it's getting worse and worse. Bro, Every time yeah, you talk about I have how four, many times listen, this lately. I have four kids, okay? Yeah. This was the worst night I've ever experienced in my entire life. I'll, I'll tell you guys in a second. But he, <laughs> oh, my God. He goes, up to, he goes up to Jessica, and he goes, Mama, I got to tell you something. Uh, Papa, he, you know, he took me upstairs, and he did something really funny. And she's like, what do you do? And he goes, he shaved the beard off his armpits. <laughs> <laughs> he came beard. up to me. I was hanging out with him. Armpit you know? beard. Yeah, and I was like, you know, because so I'm like just trimming my, you know, underneath. And he's yeah. like, oh, you're, you're shaving your beard. And I'm like, that's, <laughs> like, that's just armpit. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, he also he was laying out in the sun and he, he he was looking down and I guess he saw a little peach fuzz on his chest. Yeah, you know? uh -huh. and he goes, mom, mom. And he goes. Papa said I'd have to wait a long time to have a beard, but I already have one. Look, he's just looking at <laughs> little peach fuzz on his body. Oh, dude. Nice. So I saw cute. the video of him doing push-ups this morning yeah. by himself. Hey, what that? is that going was, on? That was awesome. I don't like talk about he's working all out. by himself over there just doing these push-ups on his own in the playroom. Uh, yeah, that's she cool. saw him and she started filming him. That's he's, cool. He's just doing, he's trying to do exercise. And he, he, he invented some, and then one is push-ups because he must have seen us doing push-ups at one point. But anyway, <laughs> let me tell you guys about this night of sleep that was just devastating, dude. So. We were traveling, which always messes with my sleep, and flying just kind of messes me up in Ugh, general. Especially that way. Florida back as well. Oh, just, <sighs> just, it was just, I went Florida. Yeah, it was a beast. I went Florida, Texas, Texas back home. I had to wake up super early to get back, and it was just really just, it, it doesn't feel good, right? In that, during that period of time, though, my kids were starting to get sick. So my daughter was giving Jessica some, some trouble. So she was having some poor sleep. So we're leading into this, this incredibly horrible night of sleep. Both of us are already kind of tired. Oh, okay? God. So I get home. I'm like, you know, I'm you guys are still over. married. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, dude, sanctifying. Yeah. I, I'm, I know what that means now. The yeah. term sanctifying means when you go through challenge and it brings you guys closer. Oh, good. Not apart. Good. And so actually uh, the good news with this is that we, that we went through the toughest, which I'll tell you guys, night ever. And the next day we're both exhausted, dead, completely just out of it. Moments of laughter, oh, being good. with the kids, you know, hugging each other, even while it was happening. So anyway, we go to bed and uh, right away, we went to bed at 10, midnight or so, the baby wakes up and she, you can't, she, the only way she stopped crying is if Jessica held her while either standing or sitting up. That was it. She couldn't, she couldn't lay down with her. I couldn't take her. She'd freak out. Just mom and mom has to sit up. Okay. So that's happening and it's just all night. So we're like, oh, this is terrible. So I'm staying up with Jessica 
because uh, I, I realize how isolating it is if you're up with your baby by yourself and you're just exhausted. So I'm, I'm going to stay up and just give her support, right? So I'm there. Meanwhile, uh, my son wakes up for some reason in his room. So I run downstairs, try to put him down, put him to sleep, come back upstairs. He wakes up again, go downstairs. 4 a.m., the baby finally falls asleep. So from midnight or so to 4 a.m., she was up, both of us up. And I went down, up and down the stairs two or three times. 4 a.m., finally falls asleep. I go downstairs because I'm like, okay, if my son wakes up again, I, then I got to be down here because otherwise he'll come up and wake up the baby too or whatever. So I go downstairs and he wakes up at 5.15. That was it. So I probably had a grand, <laughs> maybe three hours of sleep in one night. Ugh. The whole night, just yeah. oh back and forth God. and totally brutal. It was, it was devastating. But uh, I took some pictures um, of Jessica while she was holding the baby so I could show her. It was really sweet. It's like, you know, she had, we had the iPad at one point. <laughs> Jessica's trying, she's trying to sleep while sitting up while the yeah. baby's, you know, doing her thing. And, uh, but it was, it was, uh, it also brought us together, man, which is pretty cool. So let me ask you, because you're, I know you're also working on this uh, exercise relationship that you got going on too. Did you still work out? Did I still work out? Or did you take no. it off? No, no, no. I you took not. it off. Yeah. Oh, dude. good for you. Because no. actually, normally your your psycho ass would still have worked out. No way, man. Because <laughs> I feel like that's like a situation right there <sighs> like where the right thing is there. to let yeah. your body rest and not do it. The addictive part is I that know. I would go work out still because I say I need it. Bro, we were. I was dead. There was no way. Oh, good for you. Yeah, there was well, no good for way. you. That's there I was, think that's I think that's growth there too. I think that's an area that maybe, you treat. Yeah. <laughs> more else physically yeah. unable. Let me think about it. No, I thought about it when I did it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no way. Yeah, I think that's an example of that right yeah, there. Of uh, old you still would probably go and get that training <sighs> in and tell yourself that you absolutely Bro, have that's to. brutal. I tell you what, man, the, 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 the sleep with kids, because here's the problem, because then I have, we're on a family thread, right? And I have a family member that um, doesn't have any kids or anything. People with kids, whenever someone without kids makes a comment, there's always a part of you that your ego kind of like goes, shut up, you know, because I'm like, oh, it's terrible, no sleep or whatever. And this person goes in there and goes, yeah, you know, those are the worst nights. You know, And I'm like, you don't got no kids. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because when you lose sleep and you don't have kids, you always have the next day. Yeah. You can always sleep in the next day. Yeah, yeah. Kids don't sleep in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't sleep in. I, I actually so think, the next day is- I it, actually think that has a lot to do. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously age plays a massive role and stuff like that too. But there is something to say about the psychological part when you were younger, single, and no kids. Of like when you know you were pushing the limits, but you knew that like I'll just I'll get it all back on Saturday yeah. or tomorrow yeah, I will get up like till noon. Yeah, like so you could power, versus when you're an older guy, you're a dad now, you got four kids and you're going, where am I going to recover this? No, you like you're like it's gone forever. You already, yeah, because you exactly it. it's gone forever. A piece of me's gone forever. You I'm lost gonna go it. back. Yeah, I'm gonna go back a year in life, Dude. right? <laughs> no, you lost it forever, man. I was like, so I see that text, you know, that come through. <laughs> oh yeah, those are the worst. And right away, I would be like, you don't know what you're, why? Because your dog kept you up one night. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, until the teenagers, then they're just they'll sleep till noon. You're like, Isn't that wow, weird too? Yeah. That that's a is that what what is that? Do you know what the the, the physio is there a physiological reason yeah, why is. teenagers uh, yeah. go through this part of their life where all of a sudden you sleep? And I remember Some that too. Developmental thing. Yeah, brain sure, yeah. neural it's a brain of, so it's a brain thing yeah not a so muscle the group of people that require the most sleep are teenage girls so teenage girls actually require something like 10 hours of sleep versus uh the average person so teen girls and i know because my daughter could do this um teen girls can sleep a lot and they need to for some reason mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah, crazy you know is. who requires the least amount of sleep as you get older Older. i know that's it goes down that's what i mean the young so if i recall seeing this chart it's when you're very, very young, it's super high, right? right? The amount. Naps all day. And then you kind of plateau a little bit and then you spike at like uh, teenage years and then it's a, a gradual drop all the way yeah. down for the rest of your life. Yeah. Just less and less and less and less sleep yep, is needed yep. as you get older. It's all about it's the brain development and pruning and all that stuff. Yeah, I've always yeah. wondered why Why it, it, it yeah. makes sense when you're young because your body's growing and you need you need all I this. remember, do you guys remember that when you were a teenager and you could just sleep yes. until like yeah, noon? I could sleep Especially for 12, 14 hours. Yeah. That's what I mean. You could go, you could grind and not sleep for, a day or two doing something because I, I would do things like that where I go like, yeah, it's okay though. Saturday, I got nothing. I'll yeah. just fucking mm -hmm. sleep all day. Yeah. And you could. You could lay in bed till four o'clock I couldn't. The that's the other thing too. I, I mean, I could kind of sleep in now, but sleeping in for me no, would be like an hour past when I wake up. <laughs> My hips start to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like on the side, I'm like, ah. It always wakes me up. Hey, how so, many, hey, it hold makes up. me angry. How many pillows do you use when you go to sleep now? Bro, I have like five. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Like, at least four, dude, because I have one on the face and I got one on 
I'm hugging and I got two, you know. <laughs> so you do that at home too. Keep my too. head up so my ass reflux that. doesn't get all crazy. We always stay in the same room, right? So I adjust and I, I was meant Is to he ask you that. Pillows yeah, yeah. He's always got like two pillows over his face like this and it's a like wall, a fortress. A wall. He has a wall on one side. It's he's a got two pregnant legs. lady with a bump yeah. between his legs. He's got all of really. Legs. Also, it's protection, you know, in case Adam you know, wakes <laughs> yeah. up in the middle of the night. There's no way I'm getting in. He's getting in this fortress going on there. Hey, you should get you should get one of those pregnancy pillows, bro. The big long ones. Body size. Yeah, I've seen those. I, I don't know. That's a whole nother level right there. What do you mean? You already got four or five pillows. Just get a big ass. <laughs> Once I do that, it's like, one. I mean, <laughs> you surrendered by then. Yeah, 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 surrendered. Yeah, you're exactly. Fully, yeah, you're fully committed. To all in. <laughs> we should buy one for him. But have you seen those pillows? They're like these huge body pillows, but they're like anime characters. Like oh. Weird dudes that like to sleep with. They have like a like, face on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, God. What's wrong with people? Know. Hey, I was going to ask you this. So you know what Justin told me where we were gone? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the audience knows because we're on the show. He almost cut his finger off. He did cut a big-ass chunk of his finger off. I did. It was a big Bro, chunk. within a few days, it's completely like a, healed. I would say like a, maybe like two weeks, but yeah. Are it, you on BBC right yes. now? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. and we did the stem cell treatment, so oh, I don't know. I'm too. like, I, I don't know. I feel like a lizard. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> like maybe I'm a lizard person, and I've been like, oh, ah, radar. You didn't know about it? Yeah, because I'm one of them. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. But like, <laughs> seriously, and people ask me at the NCI event, um, about the finger because the episode dropped and, and it was like I'm like I'm I'm embarrassed. It's like all the way healed. It's like a little scratch. Yeah. It was like oh let me see your finger. He's well, like, look at it. See it right there. Yeah. Look, it's like all scar tissue. It's like, like wow, you made yeah. that big of a deal over like, there, huh? <laughs> layers grew back all the way to where it doesn't even have like a dent like it did before, to where I had like a chunk like out so, of my finger. So I'm on BPC I'm also, and I cut my finger. Doug was there when I cut my finger, and it's almost completely healed. That was only a few days ago. Yeah. So I didn't notice that, but I think you're right. Oh, okay, that's right. I do you remember? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean that seems that. to be of of all the peptides, that's the one that has the most research the most positive feedback of what it's doing well that's the one dr working. seed said he would recommend the most Remember i mean every the every, every doctor every person that i've talked to has said that yeah. bpc 157 has the most like backed you know research around what it's doing for people and it's, it's been insane and every i mean i experienced that with my achilles it was scary how how it felt it was i remember you were worried to go test it yeah because it was like there's the way i knew it just had yeah. felt like weeks prior uh-huh to make that big of a leap when I had been dealing with that injury for such a long period of time was like, this is kind of Speaking weird. of which, so is this, but, okay, just on the BPC front, like, is that what they found is the biggest impact is like tissue healing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Across the board. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Blood vessel healing, tissue healing. Um, and it's got some- Yeah, because this is insane. It's actually got some, I never talked about this, but BPC also in animal studies has been shown to reverse the damage caused by- uh, Drugs that influence the dopamine the dopamine system of the brain. So they'll give methamphetamines oh, to they'll give methamphetamines to to rats and mice. Which, by the way, I wonder what a mouse. <laughs> wonder what a mouse. That's a such a fun like. experiment. Yeah, like, we like, do. Like, <laughs> give it some drugs, but give, and then, so causes certain structural damage. And then they give the, the 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 mice or rats BPC and it heals the brain. This is good for people, by the way, who take um, stimulants for ADD or ADHD because it does oh. impact a reward system. Hmm. So there may be some, there may be something. Yeah. There may huh, be something. I didn't know that. Anyway, speaking of peptides. So I, I, I got to be careful how much I say, cause I don't want to say too much about this person. Otherwise people might know who he is, but I know somebody who is a very, he's like a Silicon Valley billionaire. You said person. Yes. Okay. I can't say that. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you can. No, you can. <laughs> so, whoops. And, uh, he's using, um, I think terzepatide. I think it's terzep or some, it's one of the GLP ones. Okay. He's not using it for weight loss. He's using it for um, sexual addiction. He's using it for wow. addiction. So there are people right now who are using GLP ones, not for just to lose weight, but rather to help them with impulsive behaviors, which we talked about on previous episodes. Yeah, which is wild. Wow! wow. So I just said week four, so I'm on one month. So it's still, what it's, do you think? Wild. It's yeah. It's fucking tripping me out. So yesterday was so I'm uh so I was started this at two thirty one. I weighed this morning at 215. Oh my gosh. Um, That's and, a lot, dude. Yeah. Now, again, I'm still, you hear me still kind of coughing a little bit. I have not had two full weeks of complete health. And so I want to, I want to be able to report back. That'll make you lose weight too. Yeah. And also too, you're trying to, I'm trying to read how I feel and signals and, uh, you know, appetite and all those things like that. Like those are affected by my, um, you know, how I feel too. Mm -hmm. And my sleep's not the greatest with all these things. So there's, there's some variables I want to get leveled out so I can really continue to report what's going on. But the you know, what what has definitely been consistent that is interesting is day six uh, is if there's ever a time 
where I think about something that I would have, like an ice cream candy or a treat or something outside of like really whole food, healthy foods. It happens day day six, late afternoon to evening, so before, so last hmm. night. Because it's once a week. Uh, yeah, it's a once a week's injection. Uh, so you right can totally, kind of wearing off. totally tell. And it also makes sense why you're supposed to kind of keep going up as you go to week four, which by the way, I'm not going to do. We're going to keep that. I want to let you know that. You're going to stay on the low dose. I'm going to stay on the low dose. Yeah, because I was going to say, Because it's crushing the appetite more than I, I would like anyways in the first place. So You literally did a full day where you didn't eat anything. Thing and we just realized that I was like, oh my god, you didn't even eat like all day. Yeah, we all day didn't even because we were so busy and stuff like that. I actually had a protein bar. It's all I had that, yeah. day, that day. That was the total amount of calories I had and felt fine. Didn't have like the and then the next day when so that's happened in my life right where you just get so busy right yeah. and you don't think of food. But then the next day the body goes oh I need yeah. it and then I pfft, again another another day. So that that's been crazy right. Huh. And so last night so I had like this little like oh and we've had this ice cream in there and I'm like you know what. I'm going to go have some. I want to see how this goes down. Like, I just wanted to see if I enjoyed it the same, if I could just have a little bit and put it away, if I had to like really think about that or just like, bro, I ate a, a, a tenth of what I normally would have had and had no problem putting the rest of it back in the, in the freezer and felt 100% satisfied. Wow. I did not have this like, this, oh, I want it. So more. for people that don't. That is fucking trippy. Yeah, so something that trip. hits that. Br Man, when I hit ice cream, you look out. It's a strong one for you. Yes, I'll yeah. just. It's I'll, like a drug. Yes, yeah. I've seen you. I, so, so what's weird uh, when I, the more uh, as I continue to look into this, and you hear uh, people's anecdotes, and then you see you know what's coming out. Uh, this is going to be most likely going to be the the biggest medical intervention across the board, bigger than um, <clears throat> you know Prozac, bigger than the PDE five inhibitors like Viagra, bigger than statins. This probably is going to be one of the most widely used, these class of peptides, most widely and used. And, well, the, and the addiction side the of it is really side weird. It's really going to be interesting. And it's really weird. We're going to see massive um, division here. There's going to be a lot of hate on one side and a lot of love on the other side. We're going to see a ton of that, which is typical with anything that's yeah. like this groundbreaking and huge, right? Because here's what's going to happen there is going to be a, a whole subset of people that this is literally going to be, this is life-changing and sure. am amazing for them. Then there's going to be another subset of people the that, that are there's just- There's a huge potential for abuse here. Looking for shortcuts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Looking for shortcuts. I had this great conversation with uh, Christina, who's our friend. Uh, it's a coach. We've shot her on the show before. She has a, a psychology background. Mm -hmm. And so she's like a therapist first mm -hmm. before a coach and trainer. And she really wanted, like she she was really digging into me, like to be like, well, what, don't you think this would be bad for these people and this yeah. and that and really challenging. And I'm like, listen, I, the, the verdict's not out with me as far as like who for sure I would do this with and not do it with. The thing that we had this, she's like, you know, one of the things I do in therapy is when people have these triggers and stuff like that, that opens up an opportunity for me to go in there to work on That's them. right. Like, what was it that triggered that? She goes, so if it eliminates that, aren't you worried that these people are, and I'm, oh, I said, yeah, you're 100% right. Like, mm -hmm. if you're not already thinking of, like, I went into it and you heard how I'm talking already. Like, this is making me rethink my relationship with food. So I didn't go in it like not thinking that there's potential work. You have the awareness of a trainer with two decades of experience working right. with other yeah. people. Right. You know? Now think if you're somebody else who's just- And you're not working with a coach. You're not yes. Just, you just take who it. Who just wants to lose weight. Yeah. And and then, the, then it has this miraculous, doesn't make you binge. But yeah. then, but the real root of all that's binging is, because it's a coping mechanism. Okay. What people need to understand is that when you binge and you overeat food, it's just like somebody who, do, even though it's not because we justify it, but someone who smokes cigarettes, does drugs, whatever, sexual pornography. Yeah, when you, when you go into the point of, of damage yeah. and hurting yourself, which is what obesity is, well, yes. there's something there that you're coping. It. Yes. And so if it now cuts that off, then they're not. So, and I, and I, well, this is her and I ping ponging back and forth. And I said, yeah, but you could also say this to them though. Maybe that helps them at least get through the initial weight loss and they get to that point and then maybe they get off of it and then starts to come back and then you can, you yeah, can start right. to, so I can see a lot of ways well, to work around it. Her perspective, I guess, like the ideal situation would be to kind of go through you With know, a, a few weeks, a month, and then really detailing out a lot of the triggers, a lot of all, all this, and then going, there's, you know, with the trisepatide. There's also, there's also this, it's a significant minority of people who get heart disease uh, or diabetes are not overweight. It's something like 20% or something like that of people who go get heart, who have heart attacks or who get diabetes are not overweight. What they are, what there's metabolic issues, they're under muscled. And I wonder how many people who are obese even just are under muscled, which the data seems to show quite a bit. So what happens when you just eat less? You don't change anything else. 
You don't increase your protein intake. You don't start strength training. You just eat less. Yeah. What happens is the body, and the data on this is very clear. And it's not the GLP ones that that are doing this, by the way. This is just anytime you cut your calories, you eat the same of what you were eating. You just eat less of it. You don't do any strength training. You don't modify protein intake. You just eat less. Your body adapts the lower energy intake by tearing muscle down. So you're going to get a bunch of people who are already under muscled to lose muscle theoretically. So I don't think this is a panacea. No. I think if it's used the right way with a trainer or coach or awareness therapist, some modifications, this could be one of the most powerful. Yeah. I do, I do regret a little bit of not doing a DEXA first so I could show people because I know I've lost muscle. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. I've lost muscle too. There's no way I lost that fast eating the calories I'm, I'm eating and to, to not, um, again, I had told you guys that I didn't care, right? The idea was you want to know you want, you're trying to go through the experience of the average person, like a client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not like the trainer guy in me who has the discipline to be like, Oh, I need to eat right now because I need, you know, 60 more grams of protein. Yeah. So I go make myself do it. I've, proven myself i can do that to extreme levels right? right to extreme competitive physiques so now i'm going about it like okay let's just allow it to take this course and see kind of where i land how i feel and what's going on but all in all even with the fact that i've had these colds like that i feel really good like my overall like inflammation on my body is like you know it, it makes me feel like man i had been in just this constant uh, state of inflammation of even though even when the, the diet's good quote unquote I think that I was still inflamed and my psoriasis is pointing to that too. Well, you for, for years, decades, you pushed yourself, even when you weren't quote unquote trying to, you were pushing yourself to be bigger than probably what your body wants to be. I know because I'm the same, same way. Yeah. And that, the, that consumption uh, probably caused some inflammation. It has to. That's the only thing well, that your makes skin. I was telling you out there, your skin looks better than I've ever seen. He doesn't. He looks like he's younger. I know. You know. I mean, I feel good too. The I do feel low energy though, and that's obviously because of all these calories. And also, I'm recovering from being sick, so this is why I want to put two weeks together because yeah. I haven't had a great workout. Um, the workouts I've I've got in have been like going through the motions, like to get through it. Yeah. But also understanding that I'm battling a cold and I was battling a flu flu bug the week before and so i knew i couldn't like i didn't want to yeah first day i feel kind of good i didn't want to go slam it in the gym and so i'm, I'm kind of tiptoeing my way around there but all in all i mean my my body feels really good i've never seen so and because it's so effective the <clears throat> potential for abuse is through the roof i could see first off competitors abusing the hell out of this i could see people who with food issues who just want to restrict use the hell out of this to make it easier that's the abuse potential there. Well, so I was sharing this with Jerry and Katrina uh, and not to get too far ahead on, on again, get over my skis on this yet until I see everything. But I would, I am, my plan is no matter what, because I see the, the, the power of it and, and knowing is that I'll keep a bottle of it always on hand. And I could see in times where I'm going to do something where I know I'm going to be challenged with overeating or eating out or bad, making Gosh, bad is using it just, not? and then, and then, cause it, it's not a fast and effective. It's not like it needs weeks to build yeah, up. Like I mean, I up. felt within day two or three, like I felt a difference. So I can imagine like I'm going on a trip for like wow. a week and I'm like, Oh, I'm just gonna take it for this week. Yeah. To, you know, I'd rather come back low calorie, not ate very much than to over ate all kinds of shit. When you see wow. something this potentially powerful, you always see uh, market uh, changes in other products and services that this affects. The the processed food industry is freaking out. I talked oh, about this already. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. They're I, get, I get why. They're not, actually too. meeting with each other, trying to figure out how are we going to deal with this if this becomes widespread and mainstream. And there's even speculation, right for this? There's even speculation that they're starting propaganda wars mm -hmm. to try and scare people because if you're a like snack food company- Misinformation campaigns? Yeah, dude. Because if you're a snack food company, yeah. like this will destroy your profit. Well, I, I cautioned <laughs> the coaches and trainers I was talking to, you know, and I said, here's, here's my thought process on this. Uh, I already know from what I've experienced and seen already, this shit ain't going away. And you as coaches and trainers are going to have to deal with it. Now, do not- get feel like you need to choose a side with it because i feel like that's what's happening right now you're either right. i'm all 100 percent pro science and peptides and this is going to be miraculous and then the other side of this is the worst thing for you you're not and it's like stupid okay yeah both are stupid this is cheating. okay there's gonna there's gonna be situations where this is gonna be amazing for people there's gonna be situations where it's not going to be as a coach and trainer you need to figure you need it to out. be informed educated about it and understand what the potential pitfalls are, what the benefits of it are, and then be able to communicate that to your clients. I, th yeah. I think and you're this, working with a physician. I think this will be a, this potentially, this is, I was telling the same trainers. Cause they were like, why would someone want to work with a trainer? I'm like, are you kidding me? 
this could potentially ex like be a massive boom yeah. to the the trainer industry because as people use this and just take it, they're going to lose muscle, they're going to lose strength, they're going to be like, oh my god, I need to do strength training. I think this is only going to fuel the strength training trend that's already started. I think it's going to make it even grow even Hopefully, faster yeah. because what people are going to do is they're going to go on these and they're going to be told by doctors, friends, and so on, you need to lift weights and do strength training when you're uh, I think I, And they're going to need trainers for that. I agree with that because mm -hmm. I agree with the the whole statement that Dr. Gabriel Lyons said, which is that we're not uh, we're not overweight, we're under-muscled. Right. And I think we're already in that situation. This what this is certainly not, this is not a pro-muscle peptide. No. This is not something that is going to support- It just makes you eat less. Right. And this is going to be great for obesity, be great for people that need to lose weight, that have struggled with binge eating, has have bad habits around stuff like that. That's going to be, but then, then the next challenge that they're going to have after that mm -hmm. is their doctor's going to be like, Hey, we, you need more muscle. You don't have enough muscle. Yeah. And so I agree <clears throat> that's going to point back to a lot of trainers. So trainers and coaches that are going through it right now, you know, continue to learn, continue to, uh, to, to get your, uh, and know how to work with it. Yeah. And work with it instead of feeling like you need to choose a side of it's all good or it's all bad. Totally. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. Totally. And I think people using them are more likely to hire a trainer than people not using them. Just like uh, men on TRT are more likely to go do strength training than people not, whatever. I think it's going to only uh, make the industry grow. Yeah, um, and speaking of which, the studies, you know, and this is across the board, by the way, it's reminding me of a study that my my brother-in-law sent me. He sent me a study that showed the 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 top <clears throat> causes of poor health and the third one on there was like cigarettes, alcohol, something, something. And then it was sodium. And he goes, and now he trains jujitsu four days a week, lifts weights, right? Eats a whole food diet. And he goes, Hey, um, you know, I know you gave me the element element T to have during jujitsu. He goes, should I stop taking that? Mm -hmm. Is that putting my sodium too high? I'm like, bro, I'm like the, what they don't show with those studies. And this is true for all studies, by the way. And I'll bring, I'll, I'll explain another one here in a second. When you look at a study that, con that that connects high sodium to all these poor health outcomes, what they don't control for is that in modern societies, processed when people food. have a high sodium diet, it's a high processed food diet. Yeah. If you control for that, it's the negatives go away, especially if you're active, you sweat, and you, 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 you move a lot, you need to have that sodium. So I told them, do not cut your sodium intake because it'll crush you in jujitsu. Um, the other study that I could talk about with that or studies are the ones that show um, in a lot of these Mediterranean countries how drinking a glass of wine a day improves health. I had a trainer bring this up to me uh, uh, at the event as well. And he said, what, you know, these studies that show like a glass of wine is good for you or not. He's like, what's going on? I said, it's just like the sodium studies. I said, what they're not controlling for in Mediterranean countries, if you have a glass of wine with dinner every night, it's probably because you're with other people and you're eating in a communal mm. setting. These aren't people by themselves isolated drinking. So yeah. if you control for that, then what you'll see is the alcohol is a negative. But it's a net positive if you only have one glass, but you're doing it with friends and family. The positive of the social interaction outweighs the negative of just one glass of wine because of that. But if you control for just that, if you're by yourself in your house, watch TV, drinking just alcohol or whatever. That's an interesting, negative. that's an interesting thing to speculate on too. I wonder, like I'm trying to think of it by my own behavior. Yeah, that's like, the most benefit because uh, they would try to deduce it down to like some of the, uh, uh, resveratrol, some of the other like no. elements within the wine. Well, well, not drink only, a glass of grape Not juice. only that though, but I'm trying to think of like <laughs> your theory on like, if you were, if you're drinking by yourself, are you more likely to be someone to just have one glass? Are you more likely to, if you're drinking by yourself, someone who's going to have three, four, right. five glasses because you're doing it to kind of medicate yourself yeah. versus I've done this many times where I'm just in a social environment or having dinner and I'm like, oh, a nice wine would pair with that steak, yeah. you know? And so you have that. And so it's more likely that I'm with people when I'm having one, like, do you think that there's a lot of people that just do what by themselves drink one drink? I well, know in the Mediterranean countries, you already got a problem if you're drinking by yourself. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I dude, hate look, to tell you, I if you look at the um, the studies that show that the benefit, a lot of them have are these countries in Europe, France, Italy, Greece, you know, Greece, and the, I know I'm from these countries, but you also look at the data; they, it's communal. They're enjoying a glass of wine with friends and family yeah. and eating together. Um, being with other people is tremendously beneficial. Good relationships are very good for your health. Bad relationships, terrible for your health. No relationships, worst. Isolating yourself is one of the worst possible things you could do for your health. So what they don't control for in those studies is that. Nobody's ever really controlling for that when they look at studies on that. But if you did, which I've seen people parse that out, it's like it takes, because alcohol is not good for you across the board. There's no benefit to drinking alcohol. 
unless you're doing it with other people, in which case, again, the social uh, benefits outweigh the negative of the one glass. Stay home, stay safe, right? (laughs) Yeah, I wanted to ask you something, speaking of stay home, stay safe, right? Uh, I wanted to ask you, Sal, about something that I never did until I met you. Um, I was always the guy who got sick and then laid up forever. And like, you're so notorious for like, as soon as you think someone's even sick around you, you start, you have like your stack of things that you do. (laughs) And I've adopted that. And, uh, you know, and of course, you know, uh, I'm biased in that situation because I feel like, oh man, that makes a huge difference. Is there research to support like, because well, right away I go right to my uh, elderberry, the zinc, and then the um, uh, like green Asia. juice. Oh, yeah. I, green all juice. three of those, green juice or and or immunity, but I feel like the the uh, green juice has oh, a the lot. Organifi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I do, I do that. And I'm like, I'm basically all I'm drinking in the daytime, like fluid wise, I'm mixing either the immunity or the green juice yeah. with that or, and then I'm sucking on elderberry and then I have my zinc lozenger stuff. If I'm doing that within the first 24 hours of feeling like, do they have research to support what that does? Yeah, elderberry and zinc in particular, it reduces the severity and or the time. So it's not going to prevent you from getting sick. No. But you'll get better a day or two faster. So what I think I feel, okay, what I think I feel is it doesn't ever feel like I don't get sick. It's like if I get sick, but it just feels like this isn't, it doesn't hit me as nearly as hard. I mean, I would say like 50% less. Like it's it's significant. Mm -hmm. Elderberry for influenza and uh, upper respiratory, it's been shown that. Zinc lozenges, because the zinc they think has to do with preventing the replication of the virus, the virus in the throat, which is where a lot of it also zinc sprays that do in the nose um, is another one. So it's, yeah, but it doesn't make you, and it then doesn't what, cure you. What, what, what also about like the, like water and fluid and drinking lots of it, because I feel like that's another, and this is also part of why I do the immunity and the green juice because it keeps me drinking oh. like, Oh, I need to drink this. Yeah. And I feel like when I'm drinking and peeing, I get through the, the cold fast. I don't know if it's so, I don't know if it's the, like the miraculous benefits of drinking a lot of water or it's when people are sick, they tend to under drink water. And so mm-hmm. they, they also get the compounding effects of not- Oh, have, dehydration. Yes. Oh, interesting. So, you know, okay, you guys have kids. You're you probably know this. right. When you have your kids, what does the doctor always say when your kid's sick? Make sure they drink lots of fluids. Yeah. yeah. The reason being, your kid will not reach for water like they normally do when they're sick. And you can right. see it in their lips sometimes. And so you have to like get them to drink because they're, they're not feeling good. They don't want to get up and drink water. Is it harder for their body to regulate temperature and all that? Like in terms of like, uh, well, because obviously like it's beneficial if, if that happens and you get like- uh, to the point where you get a fever because you're fighting off. Um, but at the same time, too, like if you're not properly hydrated, I'm dehydration sure throw everything off. Yeah, body t- re- body regulation, temperature regulation goes off. So yeah. I wonder. I, so I'm wondering, and then that makes me wonder if it's the the actual water that I'm feeling the the positive benefits, or it's the green juice and all the the vitamins and minerals that I'm getting inside. There. So vitamin C. So immunity is high in vitamin C, but there's some other herbs in there that that have been used historically for um, for viruses. Vitamin C is mixed. So there's some data to show high doses of vitamin C can reduce the severity of colds. Other data showing maybe not so much. Um, it's tough. But, you know, the stuff like they're, like uh, Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, then there's like, um, you know, old wives' tales, I'll call it. But these are things that people have used for hundreds of years. There's benefit. And then oftentimes it takes us a long time to have studies to show that, oh, that's why it works. Like a good example is honey for coughs. Uh, I remember, you know, going to the doctor and saying my, this is one of my oldest was a kid. So this is a long time ago. He has a cough. Should I give him some honey? And the doctor's like, no, that's an old wives tale. And I remember I kept repeating that. And then a study comes out, by the way, honey has been used for coughs for ever. Yeah. Hundreds of years and with high performing singers. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. They find that there's a compound in honey that actually reduces the cough reflex. It somehow it affects the brain in, in, in such a way. So it, they were right. They were right. So it just goes to show it's like, um, you know, anecdote that goes for hundred years, two hundred years, thousands of years. Just because we don't have a double-blind, placebo-controlled study, doesn't mean we should discredit an entire culture that says if you take this for this, then it tends to help. Because that's mm-hmm. a lot of anecdote. It's not a study, but it's been around. If it's lasted for that many years, then it's probably got something. I'm to so it. annoyed with the community of people that like latch onto a single study so hard and it's like becomes yeah. like dogma. Yeah. I saw that one doctor again that, that did a, a viral post of, of a clip of you were talking about a study. And God, it's like, what a, 
That guy's so annoying. It, it's, it's, well, what's <laughs> annoying? I, I, you know what I get? More, I, I don't know if I get more upset yeah. at him doing dumb stuff like that because whatever. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to build his yeah, business. Yeah, we know what he's trying to do. Yeah, Wasn't I mean, he the guy that got paid by the, yes, the beverage yes, uh, yes, industry yes, yes, to yes. talk about? And people things. think that he's like doing the Lord's work because he's out there busting all these studies. No, and doing, so, a, it's like, dude, there's it, there's way more nuance than than this isolated study. It's not, and it's like everyone thinks it's like this gotcha moment. Like, ha, finally, actually, we no, got salad. We got salad. The context wasn't even there. So what we've always said, by the way, if if he did literally 30 minutes of research, he would have seen for himself. By the way, anybody who does <laughs> social media posts wearing a stethoscope is already <laughs> yeah. stupid. Lab cut or anything. Yeah, like, get yeah. out of here. Yeah, anyway. I mean, in our world, that's the same thing if you do in every video every with, no, post with no, no shirt, shirt on. No shirt yeah, on. Yeah, same thing. Either <laughs> no shirt or the lab cut. I mean, that's your go-to. Come on. Yeah. But we've said this. For, look, the data on protein intake from vegan sources and animal sources is clear. So I'll have him watch this so he could try reposting this. The data shows, and he showed this in the study he quoted, when protein intake is high enough, it doesn't matter the source. But if it's not that high, and what he quoted was 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is right around 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, which is what we quote, or when we round it up to make it easy because we're trainers, when we talk to the average person, yeah, exactly. it's much more effective to be to give them something easy to remember than it is to target point six it. five seven whatever. One gram per pound of body weight always kind of gets people to hit the mark, okay? But if you're below that 1.6, to use the data, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is 2.2 pounds, when you go below that, then it matters. Then animal sources are superior for muscle building, recovery, and performance. So unless you're eating a high-protein diet, the protein sources matter. If your protein intake is high, then you have enough amino acids uh, and it, may, it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. Now, here's what what Dr. Sanctimonious doesn't understand is we trained everyday average people. How many clients did you ever train that hit over their protein? Intake? That hit those high protein intake on their own, on yeah. their own. 1%? Never. Never. Barely. That. Never. Yeah. So that's why we say, you know, look, if you're going to throw a shake in there, it's still not going to get you that limit that we like, but why don't you make it way it's better than, than this or even better eat meat. It's going to be better than the vegan sources. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's all. Yeah. But he took one clip and then, I know. Trying to make himself. I but that, and, you know, and then the amount of people that come to his defense and just and then think that we don't know what we're talking about. It's like, dude, he's, this is crazy. Internet's ridiculous, dude. <laughs> it's, Internet's it's, wild. Yeah. It's breeding dumber people is yeah. what it's doing. Yeah. We have more information, more knowledge out there, but it's literally breeding more people because yeah. then people just blindly follow because it's like, oh, he's an MD. Yeah. What are you, a tattooed meathead? What do you know? <laughs> you can get whatever you want. Okay, I mean, guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really? Do oh, people yeah. say that? Oh, that? yeah. Dude, <laughs> tattooed I, meathead? Yeah, yeah. I engage for a minute then I'm like I gotta get out of here I gotta, no I gotta, way, yeah, yeah, I gotta get out of here so, I, you know yeah. it's a lot of it's positives happen though too man again this morning I'm working out in a commercial gym and the amount of people lifting weights properly and following you know doing good exercises is so so much better than it used to be I can't even I can't even believe it mm. like all the squat racks were taken people are deadlifting women are bench pressing properly you know arch back and you know grounded feet and overhead pressing and watching people do box squats properly. I didn't oh, see any, know? nobody did that 15, 20 years ago. No, no. Yeah. And you know what? I, as much as I, I like literally, I, you just, I opened my DMs today and I got this message from someone I've never spoken to before. It's like, I can't tell you how much your podcast has changed my life. I was so stuck in a, a binge restrict overtrained circle. And I felt so misunderstood from the people around me that I really gave up on finding a partner at some point of my life. I've now, thankfully to you, completely turned my life upside down and now train appropriately, feel better than I ever felt before, and finally have made peace with my body. But also the stories about your family are so inspiring to me. Although I haven't found a partner yet, I know now that there are people out there who have some goals and mindsets as I do. Also, loving myself was a huge step and without any relationship would have been useless anyways. Wow, that's great. I know. So, I, you know, it's we for every one idiot that we have on the internet that posts stuff like that. There's I luckily we have a balance of like 10 messages like that, yeah. that will come in the same day. And I just yeah. re remind just myself the prodigal son. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You just gotta let them go and then they'll come back. Eventually. Yeah. Dude, I got to bring this up to you, Justin. I learned something. This is real. Okay. This is a real deal. I learned something the other day about Beyonce. You know that there's all this conspiracy. Oh, theory, huh? <laughs> oh wait a second. Yes, come on. Let's bring on all did, the celebrity no. gossip. And so just, did you know? Did you do a triple fact check before I you did. talk I about did. this? I okay, did. Can I, <laughs> can I uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and what make do, a what statement do you know? here. Well, 
I don't know. Okay, so we got called out a bit on our forum, and I appreciate that. Oh, like, just for the, the Tom Hanks thing? Tom Hanks. I know. Apparently, Tom Hanks is the beloved golden one yeah. uh, in some people's mind. Uh, he's a good actor. So yeah, he's Cosby, great. I, lo I love his movies, you yeah, know, yeah. but I'm not yeah. the guy that's, like, going to, you know, defend any of these characters with their personal lives. I don't know anything about them, right? right? Yeah. And, and two, um, and so I think there was, like, some – article like that uh, was satire that that was promoted and i i mentioned uh mark oh, Wahlberg not uh, wanting to work with him yeah not wanting to work with him so i just kind of you know regurgitated that and it wasn't completely accurate it was satire right so i acknowledge that you got me but at the same time like the, the epstein thing that was weird that they started to try to kind of also tie that in is like that was also like fact checked and like, was it fact checked because they don't even have an official list of yeah, the, the Epstein list out there. And I've dug, trust yeah. me. And um, there's a it, lot of stuff on, on conspiracy internet land about Tom Hanks being part of all Exactly. That. There's a whole, there's, there's like thousands and thousands of people just like incessantly like commenting yeah. about. So I'm not real quick to defend him. I'm just going to put that out there. So if you want to do that, you know, that's up to you <laughs> when the information really comes out. But you know, for right now, you know, I'll admit I, I was wrong. It was a satire piece. You got me. Well, it's, it's, it's harder these days to kind of sift through all that for sure. Well, so this is not satire. So yeah. Beyonce's drummer put a restraining order on Beyonce. This was real. Do you know why? This was do, a, while a dude ago. drummer or a girl drummer? No, it was a female drummer. Oh, female this drummer. happened, and I looked it up. I'm like, is this real? So this was in 2018. So I'm like, can't be real. I looked it up. Her ex drummer filed a restraining order against Beyonce. You ready for this? Do you mm. want to know why? Why? Extreme witchcraft. <laughs> shut your face. Yes. Dude, that's that Beyonce. Shut your face. That Beyonce practiced extreme witchcraft, was putting curses on people, on her, what? magic spells of sexual molestation what? to harass her. That she's like, I just need a restraining order see, on her or whatever. Yeah. See, now stuff like that. And you're just like, okay, you know, that's, that can't be, that can't be true. Uh, you know? Well, I mean, they, she put a restraining order on her for it. Yeah. That's pretty Well, wild. the Lizzo stuff too, right? Like she had all these like dancers coming out about all that. And that, that kind of came out and was, you know, inflammatory towards her career. And then now she comes out later, like I quit. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. like all like, you know, I, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to stop. Yeah. You know? I actually, you know, the, the forum member that, that called out the Tom Hanks. So first of all, I, I was tagged in there. So I was like, did I say that? I don't remember saying that. And you came forward and said, that was you who said yeah, that was me. me. I didn't even remember it. I did. I did appreciate the conversation and dialogue I had with her. She didn't, I, I, yeah. I don't mind when people ask and challenge. I love that. Whatever, exactly. That's great. And she was, but she, and I just was straightforward. Like, no, I, I don't think that. I'm going to go back and fact check every celebrity guy. I so said the, the part of the show that we we claim to be is fitness experts. So That's when we it. talk about studies, yeah. yeah, and we talk about stuff related to that, <laughs> you bet your ass yeah. we're the rest we're, of it is just three dudes having. Yes, yeah, right. The rest of it is yeah. like there's no script to this. There's like I had no idea. <laughs> we're we're riffing, to, dude. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> and you know, you read something five minutes ago. You bring the it Beyonce up. Beyonce thing. Like I don't know. Yeah. yeah like I, yeah, exactly. Riffing, I didn't go. I have no idea. I'm gonna take his word for it. We're gonna argue about it. We're gonna laugh about it. It's like that's part of the formula of the show. Is that. There is our our knowledge that we've acquired over over two decades of training people that we bring to you that we promise yeah. is going to be factual and accurate. And then if we're ever wrong, we'll also the type of guys that will come out and say, "Hey, new study comes out, or this has changed. This is no well, longer true." But not for celebrity gossip. But not for celebrity gossip. It's, it's I'm funny, not going to spend hours digging and doing homework just so I can have a conversation with my buddies yeah. about bullshit that I'm seeing on the internet. Like you that's know, just what's not so funny about that is I I like totally remember this being a formula even with my clients. Like you know, certain clients I'd have like we start off with like oh did you hear yeah. <laughs> Beyonce you know yeah. and so you kind of get into it and it's funny too I have two other like celebrities I'm going to bring up some stuff so I did not know that Fred Durst okay you know amongst all these other projects he's done like he actually like wrote a script and created a movie that had John Travolta in it of really? people wait wait it was an actual movie they made yes what's it called it's called uh the fan Hold on. So no one's ever heard it. We, how did, how did he get Travolta so, and we not hear it? I have no idea. So, oh, it's called The Fanatic. Okay. And get this. So they actually like opened it up uh, for 52 theaters. So this was like, they pushed it out there. Like it wasn't just like some, you know, like independent project or something. You know how much money it made? How much? $3,153. When it opened <laughs> with John Travolta in it, yeah, three thousand Travolta, and it had, I guess, also. Doug, can you pull this up? Can That's I all see family it? members. Yeah, it's in twenty nineteen. Can I see it? I want to see it. It was show recent. Me, show me it. Show me a picture. Yeah, yeah twenty nineteen. No 
and, and so he plays like this autistic, um, like psycho fan that's like like basically stalking uh, a celebrity. Shut up. Yeah, I want to watch it. it. I want to watch it. I know. I kind of want to. I want to watch it. The guy that was breaking it down, and I got caught like in this article uh, that was talking about it. It was saying that it's like super quotable too. It's like a, a horrendously like great movie to like. You know, sometimes you watch bad movies. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of sometimes bad movies are cult classics. Yeah, they're so bad. Well, you can make a you can make a case like in Napoleon Dynamite was like that. Yeah, it's just so, so weird. Ri yeah, yeah so ridiculous and stupid, yeah. but it's so good because of that because it has a million one liners in it because yeah. it's so silly, right? So yeah, so I was super curious what? about that. I never oh, I'm heard so gonna of it. watch this. Yeah. I want to see. That's wild. Hey, so that's our homework. What what about Diddy? You haven't brought up Diddy yet. Do you guys? Do you guys like? Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> That's so dark, dude. Like, like, hey, know, hey, dude. did you? Hey, you, I, bro, talk about not having any facts to fact check right now because that shit is like in the. We're in the throes yeah. of that right now. All I, mean, I know is I heard he's not arrested. Like so I far, heard like, leaked yeah, audio. I heard leaked audio that his bodyguard said he recorded. Okay, you sent that, and that was that sounds, just bro that ruined my whole bro. day. I don't know I, what it is. Okay, but it yeah, sounds but something like that. Bad. I'm so I'm so skeptical that with AI technology now with like. Leaked audio, even yeah. visual, I'm questioning now because how great the AI technology is. How easy is it to fake some voices and insert stuff well, like this, that? Well, this sounded, right. it, was, it wasn't voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of weird oh, shit. You, my, my point even more though, you know, say, how hard is it to fake <laughs> stuff like that? I Gross. Just, it's, and why is he not arrested? If the FBI goes in, okay, like if they kick your yeah, door. Yeah, they did a raid. Yeah, if they do a raid, like they, they kick your doors down. They've got something. You don't just randomly go They have down. enough for that. Yeah, like you, yeah. you get a warrant like that to, to kick the doors down. Well, they, you know what our theory is, right? I say our, I'm throwing Justin in this. Yeah. They're, they're going the conspiracy in. Conspiracy theory. Not to, not to convict them. I know, to get the to stuff. Throw That's why well, I said. It's, I think. It's be, yeah, and it's because of all of the high profile celebrity, yeah. you know, you know, high athletes, power. you know, yeah, like royal family, you know, like people <laughs> like that that might be intertwined there that have dirt. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's so crazy. Crazy, because I mean, of course, you know, in that world, that's a currency. Uh, yes. You know, blackmail and and having information about people is is very valuable. That, so I think there's somebody. Let me put my tinfoil hat and play this game since I never do with you guys. Is that this is connected to the Epstein thing? And whoever's in the who whoever it is that is powerful enough to make moves like this, that was almost caught up in Epstein. Is also connected. So to Epstein here. was to control politics and billionaires and some entertainment and scientists, people. even. And then P Diddy was used to control the music industry and black. And for sure, there's crossover in those parties. Of course, for sure, there's crossover in those parties. So because they found well, this again, I don't. There's know There's definitely true. somebody, whether that's a you know somebody of royalty or a president or or somebody who's got some serious power who I think has been to both and is cleaning up their trail. It's like okay. I've got the Epstein thing handled because uh -oh. he's no longer here to give me, but I still got caught up at the, in the P Diddy parties. And now, and so I think whoever that is, that's where this oh, is coming man. from. That's, Didn't Cat Williams say like, this is it did. this year. It's all going to come out. He said, he said, 2024 is a reckoning. Year, yeah. Oh. So that's where like, I, I'm like, all instead of the media companies that have fact checkers and all that, like I'll, I'll go through Cat Williams. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, bro. What's that called? He's again? pretty accurate. So what's, far. what's that? What's that? When you're a genius, what's that? Mensa. 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 Yeah. I keep trying to, so I was telling someone that who like try to discredit him. I'm like, you know, he's fucking Mensa, right? Yeah. Like, that's literally like very smart, brilliant. Very yeah, like brilliant. Justin, did you ever watch in in 2016? You just reminded me of this. There was an event that they did to kind of signify the opening, or we're going to turn on the <laughs> Large Hadron Collider, the whatever. Did you ever watch that? It was like a ritual, right? It's a ritual for reals. Yeah. Like I saw a video of it in 2016. By the I, way, I heard about. By the way, everything got it. weird after 2016. Yeah. This is when the whole world seems to have gone. <laughs> this is where we're the dimension. Yeah, this is where our whole yes. Yeah, That's our theory. I don't know. Did you yes. finish the octopus? No, we just, no. We watched more though. Stop. Listen, finish bro, it, please. I should have watched it. I was I'll up come anyway. Right? the kids for a day yeah. just to go no, watch it. Fucking watch the damn thing. I mean, because because you know why? Because what you're saying right now, I'm like, oh, this shit has definitely been going on. This 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 like the opening of CERN, bro. I got to show you the video. Like it's it's the strength. It looks like a satanic ritual. The whole thing. Oh, God. Sacrifices, dead people, a portal, oh, my hell. God. And, and this was like what, for European leaders. wonder why we are like weirdly obsessed with like, I don't know why people aren't weirdly obsessed with things like that. It's <laughs> you like, can find if you have a ritual, literally, if that physically happened, right? Like that happened at that spot before that opened up, like- 
what are we dealing with here? Uh, right. <laughs> and now you have NASA sending four rockets, sound rockets into, uh, into the atmosphere, basically to study the this, eclipse. eclipse. Hold on. Is and it happening like, right shooting now? Shooting rockets. The, the eclipse happened, right? Yeah. It, it already happened. I know We're the scientific rationale. The yeah. yeah. So the, the, they're We're talking about the ionosphere yeah. and like trying to like, when there's less rays of the sun coming out, like so they, they see, yeah, the temperature changes and all this and like how it's affecting because the, the outer limits, you have the space station. And so okay. they're kind of seeing how that, you know, they can get a, a better accurate, like, portrayal of, like, how it's affecting yeah, it. Yeah, but, but you're like, not. But I'm like, no, it's, it's definitely, like, a, a demon opening portal. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's cute, NASA. Yeah. yeah we, we know it's really <laughs> We know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to go work with demons. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're bringing on you think, uh, 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 Iowa, or what do they yeah, call it? Yeah, AOI, I think a was the name of it. Yeah. That's the conspiracy theory. Do you think the, the acceleration of all this is because also the, the growth and wealth because when when people reach a level of of money, wealth, and the next thing is power, control, and yeah. weird shit like that, like I, I really feel like, and that's why it's not a it's not a far fetched conspiracy for me to think that it's all these celebrities. I think people more people think it's the people that think it's like why would them? Or well, it's like I'll tell you why because when you get to a point, and I was just listening to Will Smith talk about it, and you could tell you could see it in his face. He had this interview just recently on a podcast that he and and I remember when. Um, who else came out and said this about when he was uh, Jim Carrey about wishing that people could experience people. They, they almost talk about it as a miserable thing hmm. to having so much money that you could literally buy anything and everything because it really puts you in this weird predicament of like, why am I not happy? Yeah. Yeah. What I am I, what, what, what am I, what am yeah. I, I watched an interview with Jordan Peterson and Matt Walsh and Matt Walsh can come definitely be a douche sometimes. And so he had did a tweet that said something like depression isn't real. I don't remember what it was. Jordan Peterson educated him. And he was very good at it. And he made some incredible points. He said in the past, questions of exist like existential crisis were answered by spiritual leaders or philosophers. Yeah. Now we've done it all with doctors who don't yeah. have any background on that. Yeah. He says, that's a big problem. You need to be able to understand all of that. And, and if you understand what the philosophers or spiritual leaders have talked about for years, sin is literally moving away from where you're supposed to move. And one of the problems with sin is that more you move towards sin the bigger and worse the sin gets because it's like drinking seawater. I'm not thirsty. Oh no, I'm thirstier. Oh no, I'm oh, thirstier. So it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so very, wow, very Pisces, good. Based interview. off of that, mm. that makes so much sense of the, the super powerful, wealthy. Yeah. Rich the drugs, like, sex, money. This yeah. isn't enough. More drugs, more sex, more money. This isn't enough. And yeah. you keep going and you have to either face the fact that like, maybe that's not the direction or I'm going to keep chasing that. Right. You know, that's why you have all those problems. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Oh, so good wild. stuff. <laughs> In today's episode, you heard us talk about uh, terzepatide, semaglutide, or GLP-1 agonist. We also talked about BPC-157 and testosterone replacement therapy. If you're interested in peptides or hormone replacement, go to mphormones.com. Doctors will work with you. It's real prescriptions coming from FDA-regulated laboratories um, and pharmaceutical companies. So it's not just something online that you get that you don't know what's in there. This is legit. mphormones.com. They'll help you out. Go check them out. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Nick from California. What's up, Nick? How you doing, Nick? What's happening? What up? Who's going to be in Lodi? I am. My best friend lives in Lodi. I go there all the time. Oh, right on. I have a restaurant here. Oh, you do? Yeah, I come through. Yeah. What's uh, what's the restaurant? It's called Guantonio's. Guantonio's? Yeah. All right, I'm writing it down. Oh, your last name, I'm assuming. Is that what that is? Uh, it's our family name. Okay. Um, it got got changed in the 50s when it wasn't so great to be italian in the no way no way in the u.s are you, are you gonna yeah. so i'll be there on um fr friday saturday yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay cool I'm, I'm gonna hit you charge up. him full price <laughs> yeah he makes a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> how can we help you man um so um uh, just fine you know getting back in the gym played sports and things in high school um and then kind of kept that up through college uh, but then with, with work and life and, and everything kind of got out of, um, working out as much and, um, not much at all the last probably 10 years with, with travel and getting the restaurant open and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, within the last six or seven months, finally got my butt back in gym, working out, getting, getting healthy, um, was doing, you know, research for opening restaurants. So like I say, eating like an asshole and drinking like an asshole for 15 years, but uh, it was part of my old job doing sales. I could, I was basically paid to eat. I was working in the meat industry. Um, so anyway, got got uh, 
got back in the gym with the help of a good buddy of mine. Um, and within the last six months, lost 30 pounds uh, while putting on muscle. Um, you know, listen to you guys regularly and, and hearing the same info. So I, I uh, you know, protein has been, you know, hitting those protein targets have been a big part of helping me kind of clean up my food and uh, a lot of egg whites and chicken breasts and veggies and quinoa. So um, did it the right way, not 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 fat, you know, not not eating, uh, but also putting on muscle. So um, so got some blood work done with uh, you know my trainer, kind of suggesting, and then um, uh, coach mentor of mine uh, that I've been working with, uh, kind of suggesting getting some blood work done just to kind of see where we're at. Got some family history with with heart di- disease and all that kind of stuff. So uh, got that back, and they uh, there's some some things, other things on there. But there, the, the my main question is about the the TRT and then in clopamine or however you pronounce that. Uh, my they my they got my testosterone in the 400s. My trainer that I work with, so I do CrossFit, um, and then I added in some strength training on top of that. But uh, he's he's he seems to think in that 400 range is is fine and and you know look at it again in you know three to six months and see where we're at. Um, of course, the company's suggesting some some either TRT or the enclopamine, and then um, my coach trainer kind of uh, not trainer but coach mentor suggesting you know one of the above. And I know you guys have talked about Shilajit in the past um, as a natural like kind of testosterone enhancer and. As I wrote in my email, uh, you know, I do see some fatigue and some, you know, I'm a father of four and being a chef and owning a restaurant and uh, different hours, you know, trying to keep my, my sleep pattern as close as possible, but just sometimes it's just not possible. Um, you know, I do see all those things um, that you, you hear about with, with low T. So I just thought, you know, get an unbiased, educated opinion from you guys and appreciate you taking my call and email. Damn, bro, you yeah. are a father of four, a chef, yeah, you restaurant so much, owner, man. and CrossFit guy. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot, dude. Yeah, I think you're. <laughs> you can. You can. You probably can positively affect your natural testosterone by backing off quite effectively without doing anything mm-hmm. uh, in terms of uh, medical intervention. So, enclomiphene is what you're referring to. This yeah. is a. Uh, it's 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 in the old days they would use something called clomiphene. This is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. By blocking the estrogen receptor, it actually causes the body to produce more testosterone. So it is one medical intervention way of raising testosterone naturally. Uh, The challenge is going off the enclomiphene, then you lose that signal. And so where do you go from there? Um, TRT is testosterone. This is just testosterone that you inject once a week. Sometimes they have gels or creams that you can use. And that'll raise your testosterone uh, artificially. And now here's the deal. You'll get, you'll feel uh, stronger. You'll build more muscle. Libido will definitely go up with TRT, possibly within clomiphene as well. Uh, But the problem is you may be uh, blunting some of the signals that your body's telling you that are based off your lifestyle. In other words, if your testosterone is at 430, and let's say that's low for you, right? Let's say if you were doing everything optimally, your testosterone would be closer to 650 to 800 or 850, then taking testosterone, it'll it'll fix some of the symptoms, but it's not addressing the root issues. So at a 430 level with what you're doing, if you were my client, I, I would look at lifestyle factors to see if we can affect your testosterone in a positive way. And, and the places I would look first are sleep. Is your sleep consistently good on a day in, day out basis? And then number two is your training. And how, how many days a week are you working out? How many days a week are you doing this this CrossFit and then, and then the strength training? training uh four four to five okay you might be overdoing it especially if you're doing a crossfit style of training where you're doing this kind of high intensity type of deal how often is the crossfit happening uh yeah four to five times oh a week. wow yeah 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 i would i would i would back off i would do more traditional strength training two to three days a week at mount at most and then i would be active on the other days i would look at just regular total activity I would have good clean diet like you're doing and I'd, I'd look at my sleep. I'd be very consistent with my sleep. And then you could supplement with nutrients that, uh, if they're low tend to cause testosterone issues, vitamin D boron zinc. These are the more common offenders. Um, and then I'd see where you're at in, in 60 days. And I have experience with clients with this where I've seen, you know, I had one guy whose testosterone 
went from 400 to 900. I had another guy go from, you know, the 300s to the 650s. So uh, you can make big, I mean, testosterone fluctuates pretty dramatically based off of lifestyle um, and, you know, some of the things I mentioned. Overtraining or, or doing okay. a law and, and, you know, you might be able to tolerate the workouts, but I don't know if it's the if it's optimal. It might be right. too much, especially considering all the things for kids and owning a restaurant. That's a lot, you know, and, and I have family members that own restaurants. That's one of the more stressful things to do, one of the more difficult entrepreneurial uh, processes. So that's where I would go first. Yeah, I would love to see if okay. if you let me, I would I would really prefer to see you on like a MAPS anabolic routine. Totally. You know, two to three times a week, full body type of routine, prioritize the sleep. A lot of my my training would be around, you know, trying to relieve the the stress. And, I, and, and sometimes too, when you have a lot, you have four kids, you have all this going on. Sometimes we think that the feeling that we get from kind of beating ourselves up in the workout is this sense of relief, but it, it really isn't. I mean, it's just your your cortisol feels good. Yeah, it feels it feels temporarily good, but it's not doing yourself a favor. Like you'd be better off scaling back on the intensity. And I do think that you're yeah. and and if it's if it's difficult to hear that or want to do that because maybe you really love doing CrossFit, which I'm sure you do. Uh, you know, I would just I would just urge you to try it for 30 days. Like, give me 30 days of you kind of following what I want you to follow. Go back and retest. And let's see, let's see what the testosterone right. naturally does. And my guess is I think just by scaling back on the volume and intensity of training and then putting some, you know, prioritizing sleep and then trying to improve that, I think you'll see a difference in yeah. testosterone. And if it doesn't, more. if it doesn't significantly move, um, then, you know, TRT, I mean, you have four kids. I'm assuming you don't want any more kids. No, we're good. We're, <laughs> yeah, scientifically yeah. not not able to anymore. Okay. Yeah. I have four <laughs> kids too. So it's like, you know, at that point, you know, um, if you don't mind taking testosterone uh, for the rest of your life, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and you'll definitely, and, and you'll feel good if you can't raise your testosterone naturally through lifestyle changes. But I'll, I'll, I'll be quite blunt. Um, good, healthy, natural high levels of testosterone is better for you than high testosterone levels uh, from you know uh, medical intervention, because your your testosterone levels, natural testosterone levels fluctuate. They move with your body and your stress. Having artificially high testosterone with high stress isn't necessarily a good thing. There's a reason why your body lowers its testosterone when you're under a lot of stress. So you know Got that's it. that's just yeah. And, and this is coming from someone who I'm on TRT myself. I couldn't get it to move up naturally, but that's a whole nother story. So, um, that's the direction I would go. And, and you would know, you would know within 45 to 60 days if it was working. Yeah. That's why I say, I mean, you give me a good solid 30 days. I think you'll even start to notice a difference in 30 days. You should feel, you should feel better. You should, some things you should notice is strength going up and energy levels more sustained yep. just by simply doing that. Then, you know, you're on the right track. If we don't feel that and see that or notice that, then, you know, maybe TRT is it's just another blood. Yeah. Get another blood yeah. test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's yeah. it, man. Appreciate it. Did you, oh, do we do you, uh, do you have MAPS anabolic already? No, I don't. Okay, right, let's we'll, send that to you. We'll send that over to you. Yeah, for sure, man. Okay, appreciate it, fellas. Well, you got I'll, it, brother. We'll see if uh, I try and book a Friday or Saturday night with you. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, get yeah. Send me an email or through social media or whatever. We'll okay. We'll cool. Get you set up. Right on, man. You got it, man. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. While we were talking, Doug brought up pictures of the restaurant. Looks food. bomb. Oh, looks oh my really god! Good. I already sent a text to Katrina. To, to <laughs> we're look eating at, here. To look at our schedule. That looked good. I'm going. I'm yeah. going. That looked really good. Yeah. So uh, you know, four thirty, you know, total uh, is not low. It's not optimal. Yeah. But it's not low, considering all the things that he's doing. Mm -hmm. God, I hate saying this because you know he, he obviously likes his trainer, <clears throat> and I, I know, know there's different yeah. ways of applying quote unquote CrossFit, but. If somebody says, in my experience, I'm a CrossFit trainer and I train people CrossFit, it's 99.9% .9 of the time too much Yeah, for the person that they're they training. They find out kind of like what they can tolerate. <clears throat> yes. And I think that's just kind of the state he's in right now. It's like, I'm in a, I'm doing what I can do right now uh, that I can tolerate, but it's not necessarily benefiting me. I don't know what he, I don't, I don't honestly know that he knows what that feels like right now yeah, so. well i don't you know i didn't feel like i got pushback from him yeah. so i yeah. do i mean hopefully he, but, but i also don't know if he was just like yeah fuck these guys yeah. <laughs> i mean he might that have a really too. Good, i mean yeah. it's, he might have a great i get a lot of that trainer. from crossfit guys <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh it's just you know when crossfit the the brand okay of crossfit style training 
is really a pro. It's really only appropriate for people who compete in CrossFit. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny. For by a the person getting in better shape, it's not an appropriate way to work out. By the it's way, it's a sport. Yeah, I I haven't shared this with you guys, but he was rocking the Creatures of Habit hat, which you know Mike is a big CrossFit guy, yeah. oh, and was actually messaging me last week that he's gonna he needs to start switching his training because yeah, it's taking it's taking a toll on his on his body. It's a, it's yeah, it's I have a love inevitable. hate and I have a love hate relationship with them. They did some things in the fitness industry that everybody else failed yeah. to do. They got people to squat and deadlift and barbells became cool. They got women to lift weights better than anybody else. And that's true. They also did some stupid shit, like beat the crap out of people and take everyday people and say, this is how you need to work out. And we're going to do circuits with yeah. Olympic lifting and just insane, not great programming. Yeah. So people just need to know there's other options out that's there. It. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully. Our next caller is Aline from Toronto. Aline, how can we help you? Hi. Oh my God, guys. So exciting. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for all the information that you guys put out and everything that you do. Um, and also shout out to my sister, Anna. She's the one that introduced me to you guys. Um, just as a background, I've been lifting consistently for about five years, kind of started off doing all the wrong things. I would run a 5K before every lift um, and I just wasn't eating enough, but slowly started learning more about, you know, the importance of protein, importance of sleep um, and just eating enough uh, to, you know, build muscle. I recently bought MAPS Anabolic. I've run it once already. Um, now on my second time running it through and it's been amazing. I haven't seen, like I hadn't seen uh, upper body gains like that until this program and it's been incredible uh, my question for you is i love running and i am inspired by these quote-unquote hybrid athletes um, online like nick bear and lucy davis who both run and weightlift um, and i wanted to implement some sort of system to allow me to continue to build muscle but also continue to run um, so yeah i was just wondering if you guys had any suggestions on like what kind of programs to follow when i'm kind of training for races um, and what kind of programs to, to, to use when I'm like really trying to build. Yeah, that's Maps, great. Maps cardio. Are, are you, are you, so you like running cause you like running. It's not for physique goals. It's cause you enjoy the run itself. No, yes, I do enjoy running. You know, the best way to do this is to train in seasons. So yeah. when you have a run coming you up off season, for mm -hmm, sure. you train for the run and you follow a program, like Adam said it, like maps cardio, which would be more appropriate. And then when you're out of that season of running, you would do something more like a MAPS anabolic or a MAP symmetry. strong or MAP symmetry. And you would just do enough, just enough running just to keep yourself, you know, from losing the ability to run. And so you would just train in cycles and seasons. That's the best way to do it if you want to kind of be able to do both. Yeah. Doing it all at once, not a good idea. Yeah. Off season, twice a week on your off days of training would be fine. So like running an anabolic and I think putting in a run two times a week would be enough to sustain like definitely the ability to go out and run like you want to. And then in season, running something like Maps Cardio. Well, yeah, I actually, I mean, I love Maps Anabolic, but I think performance might be well, a, a better, better fit just totally. because you know you're running and you're you're fixated in that one. Plane, no, definitely, you're right. Uh, to to be able to strengthen and support you, uh, you know, so that way too, because inevitably, like we do, we get into these patterns where we're just constantly applying the same type of stress in the same direction. So to kind of disperse that, make sure that you have. Um, you know, good support around your joints yeah. would be good. That yeah. that would be the number one thing that I would caution you about the, you know, <laughs> going after like the hybrid athlete thing and seeing these weightlifting and runners and stuff like that. Like, and I don't know, I, like Nick's pretty cool. Like I know we know him really well and he's a good dude. I don't know how I don't follow trains him. and seasons. I know. And I don't know how much yeah. he like shares about if he, if he suffers from like, you know, knee hip stuff, but that's no, the most common thing you hear with, with people that are trying to, to, to do both is they're not addressing kind of what Justin is saying, and then they get these mm -hmm. chronic nagging pains, and then they ignore it, and they still power through, and mm -hmm. that's their body telling you like there's something off in your pattern. Because when you do something like that, you know, repetitively for miles and miles, like it, it's, it doesn't take much of being off. Your heel strikes just a little off, and that just compounds mm -hmm. over time. And so just be aware of that stuff. Be aware of it, and since you're not – you're not competing, you know, trying to be hit PRs or do anything crazy. Uh, listen to your body. And when you hear it talking to you like that, go back and address it. And I agree. Maps performance is probably yeah, the best. The, the mentality is like this is um, I'm focusing more on, I'm focusing on building muscle in this season. So more of my training is geared in that way and less of it is geared towards endurance or running. Now I'm in another season. Now I want to focus more on running. So now I'm going to do more of my training and running mm -hmm. and less of it with strength training and be very judicious 
with this. The 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 trap is I'm going to do strength training and focus on running. I'm or I'm in this mm-hmm. season of running. Now I want to build muscle, but I want to lose what I just got with the running season. So now I'm just going to do all of it. This is where people tend to screw themselves up. But if you train in seasons and get used to how they feel, they feel very different. So what you'll notice with the strength training season tighter body, things feel solid, you got a nice sculpt, good good metabolism and appetite. That's what that feels like. The training feels different. Now when I'm training for the running, okay, body softens a little bit, but I have the endurance. I have the stamina. I get those endorphins when I'm running. You know what that feels like? It's very seasonal. But if you try to do it all at once, this is where people tend to really screw up is they don't want to, they don't want to give uh, any of the other to pursue the other one. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's definitely where I've kind of screwed up in the past. And I was actually going to ask about performance because it it seems like a a good program for me to kind of uh, do as well. So would I be doing that one kind of during the weightlifting season? During the weightlifting season. Yeah. Yeah. Performance weightlifting season and then switch to MAPS cardio. And you can modify MAPS cardio for like what you, because we program cardio in there, but then we we alternate through different modes of cardio. If you're primarily just interested in running, you can make running your primary cardio so like wherever it it, it recommends Mm -hmm. cardio sessions you would just insert your runs just to give you an idea like when i used to train running in the off days to kind of make sure that that's still a skill that you you have yeah so when i used to train clients that ran marathons when they were training for a marathon we would do one day a week of strength training that's it and it would be like four exercises that's all they did in the season of training for the marathon then when they would stop the marathon Mm -hmm. Then we'd move up to three days a week of strength training, and then they'd run once or twice a week just to kind of maintain that that endurance. So that's what it looked like. But when they right. were doing marathon training, it was one day a week. I have never I have never trained a marathon runner mm-hmm. where we did better with more than one day a week of strength training. It was always one day a week was was that was it. More than that would, would take away the performance. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And before I go, I just wanted to say like my sister and I have been trying to get our parents to to get into like weightlifting. Uh, they're kind of resistant to it, but we were able to get my mom to get started on anabolic. And yeah, um, yeah just thank yeah. you so much because they're very important people in my life. And we know all about how muscle is important for longevity. So um, it was only through you guys that we're able to get to them. So thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Right By the way, do you have performance? If you don't, we'll send that yeah. to you. No, I don't have performance. That'd okay. be amazing. You got it. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks. It's true, though. Parents do like us. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you guys. Parents love me. Yeah, dude. We're a big. I am a parent now. Hey, the parents. About I know. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's trying to do everything at once where people tend to screw up. But if you train in seasons, you're that that whole hybrid mm-hmm. model. I mean, it's to be quite honest. If you want longevity with fitness, that's kind of what it should look like. It mm-hmm. should look. You should train in seasons. Mobility, strength you know, endurance, like it's go the best things. way to actually acquire those skills. Yes. Well, she has the right attitude too. Like if you see it, like we didn't say it, but she says it in her question here, where she talks about that. I don't need to run a three hour marathon. I'm not trying to hit crazy PRs in the gym. Yeah, she so, just enjoys it. Yeah. So she enjoys it. It's a good, and so, and the, then all she really needs to do is she goes through this process is to listen to your body because yeah. it'll let you know when you've been doing too much of one or the other right. and then to just be able to back off and scale or change and pivot directions. And because she doesn't have this major, Oh, I got to do this yeah. or I have to do this. Right. You, it's totally okay. It's like, Hey, totally. you could be in the middle of your, you know, your run season or training and realize that the aches and pains are coming. Hey, nothing wrong with pivoting out of it and say, Hey, you know what? I can tell my body's talking to me. I need to move over into more mobility, you know, uh, unilateral work and start addressing mm-hmm. those things. And then when you feel good, Hey, let's come back into it. Like that's in the real world. That's how with this cl- client who has these goals, but don't have very specific dates we have to get ready for. This is how I would work you is that totally. we're not going to say it has to be this way. We're going to move in this direction at, with a plan, like you're saying, which is we have an off season. We have an end season. This is the program we run, but that doesn't mean that we might not pivot. We still need to supplement it. That's right. We might change something time. out or, or pivot if your body starts talking to you our next caller is ben from california what's up ben oh thanks for having me on guys i really appreciate your time you got it man how can we help you um so i had a quick question and this actually was about a new type of workout that uh, my wife has been doing um just a quick background um she is uh a a college or was a college athlete um and um really did work with um a lot of strength training, weight training, um, and is, is very proficient in, in those things. Um, but, uh, her, her concern was she got too big and quote bulky when she was in college, uh, really never liked her shape. 
um, kind of big quads, wide shoulders. I didn't know her then, so I'm just taking her word for it. Um, she does understand the importance of weight training, but seems to gravitate towards more of the Pilates and other group um, type fitness classes. Um, so my question is, um, she's in this group fitness class, and I know you're already not liking it. Um, where these participants get into this body suit that's hooked up to an EMS stimulus, uh, which intermittently contracts the major muscle groups through approximately like a 25 minute workout. Uh, workout consists of mostly body weight exercises like squats, push ups, lunges, et cetera, with some mixing in of bicep curls, shoulder presses, but these are with like five pound dumbbells. Um, so you're all, all, all the while getting this EMS current, you know, every 10 seconds that's it's contracting all the major muscle groups. So I'm not quite sure if this type of workout is actually building strength and muscle for her. Um, my question really is, would having this outside source um, of EMS contractions um, elicit hypertrophy um, or is it a waste of time? It's a waste of time. This is a gimmick. It's a, it's a new gimmick, right? Have you seen Have you seen all these now? Yes. It's, it's, go, it's circulating again. Okay, right so now. so EMS has been around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> we've, people, we've been, we have lots of data on EMS. Uh, electro, electronic muscle stimulation or electric muscle stimulation has benefits for reducing atrophy yeah. when people are um, immobile yes. or, or through Injured. therapy, right? So you tore your knee, you can't do anything, you're, it's it's immobilized, so you could use EMS on the quads and hamstrings, and it'll reduce the amount of atrophy, but it's not an effective uh, muscle-building tool. Now, in this class, this is very gimmicky, and nine out of ten times, classes are gimmicky. And they, you'll see this all the time. They'll have drums that they do, or they'll hang from something, or they'll call it some weird thing, or they'll combine two fads like Pilates and yoga, payo, or strength training and Pilates. You know, have you and, seen those spring shoes? Yeah, that they're using it, now? very gimmicky. Yeah. So what the EMS is doing is it's just making the workout feel harder. Yeah. So as you're moving, it's contracting muscles that either oppose the movement or go with the movement to make you feel like, oh my god, I'm squeezing really hard. Uh, are you getting any additional benefit? No, it's it's not doing anything. It's an intensity based group exercise class with an with a gimmick. Really, not that different from any other quote unquote strength training uh, group class. So, in terms of uh, in comparison to let's say traditional strength training, it wouldn't come close. So this um, was um when when Katrina and I first uh, started dating. Uh, this was kind of one of the the hurdles I had to overcome. Although she wasn't as hardcore into like group classes, she was hardcore into like circuit type training. Mm -hmm. And that's how she had trainers trainer in the past. She was an ex collegiate athlete. And her big fear was she, you know, she would say she's boxy. She had broad shoulders and kind of wider hips. And she hated that. She was, oh man, if I live, when I lift weights, I just get this boxy look. And so she would always the defer to like these, you know, circuit running, sweating type classes. Cause it made her feel like she wasn't getting bulky. And I explained to her that it's all about how you lift and train and how you diet yes. with that. And a lot of this is done through nutrition and making sure that I'm feeding you properly while also building and sculpting the physique. Cause even I said, even if I build your shoulders, which you don't, which sounds so scary to you. If we do that while also tapering your waist in, you'll get more of an hourglass look and you'll like your look, even though I built your shoulders. So a lot of this has to do with, you know, building and sculpting the physique and then also diet and eating properly with that. And she would be far better off running a MAPS anabolic program, following a good diet and, and getting and dieting to be lean. And she'll see what, the, the look she wants. What sport did she play in college? Uh, she was a diver, so okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I'll, yeah, the, like the, so similar broad yeah, shoulder, no, right? She probably complains about broad shoulders or feeling that way. That's a structure thing. I, you know, the only time I've ever worked with somebody of a, a female where I saw that this was like a thing was a shot putter, and 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 that's just a, that's like a whole another level of genetic development. That she, I mean, she was built a particular way, but uh, yeah, if if your wife strength trained appropriately, sculpted her body in ways that, you know, she wanted focus more here, less here, and then worked with her diet. She'd get, she'd get what she thinks she's going to get out of these crappy classes. She'd get the body she thinks she's going to get out of doing these classes, what I'm trying to say. Okay. And so that, that was my follow-up question. You would recommend, say, like a MAPS anabolic program for her? She's, she's, she'll be 42 next week, but she's still fairly, very active. 
Um, is that the route you'd take? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd start her there. And then I'd actually, like, uh, Katrina loved aesthetic. She felt that she got a lot of that from aesthetic. Yeah, because Courtney's she could, a big fan of that. Yeah, so, cause especially because she, she's trying to sculpt her body to mm. look a certain way, and she's a, a, was concerned about it looking boxy. And so I ran her on anabolic first and dieted her properly through it, and then I went into aesthetic afterwards, yep. and she, she, she loved the results from aesthetic. Okay. Well, you thank have, you guys. I really appreciate your time. Did I see you have, do you have a uh, anabolic already? Yeah, I actually have both programs. So I think oh. I'm all set. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're good, man. Right on, dude. Yeah. Keep all us, right. keep us well, posted, Ben. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Right. Appreciate your you. time. Yeah. Bye. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, what percentage of the time when a woman would come to you and say, man, when I lift weights, I get bulky. What percentage of the time was it the weights? Was it actually the weight training that did that? It never is. It yeah. diet. No, it's yeah. never. It's never that. Never. It's hard to. So you know. I mean, it's so like I saw a picture of um, what's his name, the wrestler that went to the W. That was WWE. Went to the UFC. Big, jack, huge. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Okay, his daughter. I just saw a picture of her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be the case where I'd be like, okay, I believe you. Yeah. I don't know if you guys see a picture of her. Yeah, she yeah. looks like Brock Lesnar with uh, long yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. The, no, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of women just that's not the problem. The problem is diet. And what you're what you're attributing to the weight training is not has nothing to do with you building tons of muscle. That's not what's happening. Yeah, Katrina was um, she was eating a lot of foods that uh, yeah. that she was intolerant to. She didn't know she yeah. was so she was constantly in a state of inflammation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she was a lot always of bloat. That yep, was lot, too. a lot of bloat, a lot of extra water, and then you added weight training to that. And it would just make her feel bigger and wider. And there was nothing that I, I could originally do to convince her. That's why I had to let her come to me, right? It took yeah. years of, of dating before she finally, okay, tell me what you would do. I said, okay, we're going to lift like that. You're going to lift heavy, like I'm trying to bulk you up. But then I want you to eat this way. And we're going to cut out these foods, cut out these foods, hit your protein intake. And then it only took about 30 to 60 days of her seeing like the body start to shape yep. up and she realized he's going to have a hard time pitching this to his wife. I know, dude. I know. It's I tough for him. I mean, I imagine it's hard for us. And yes, <laughs> that's what I mean. We're like <laughs> professionally doing it. I well, got a top rank podcast, honey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, ho hopefully she'll at least listen to this conversation. Yeah. And, and just like I told Katrina, I don't need very much time. Just trust me. And the, and the diet will be huge. So I'm going to tell you, like, I don't, obviously I don't know her. But if that that very well could be adding to the problem, because I do know that you add weight training to somebody who's also eating an inflammatory diet, yep. Yep. and it will feel like it's bulking yeah, you, you up. Feel, yeah. yeah, but if you Bigger. eat a, a, the diet right, and you're tight, and you will tighten up. That's right. That waste will come in, and even if the shoulders broaden, this is what I had to tell Katrina. Like, even if I build an extra inch on your shoulders, which you're not going to do, you, but, yeah, yeah, but you will taper your waist in. It's going to give you the hourglass look that I know you want. So just trust the process. And of course it did. Our next caller is Becky from the UK. Hi, Becky. How you doing, Becky? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Good morning. So nice to see you. Yes, you Thank too. you. How can we help you? Well, um, actually, do you know what? I, I emailed in on Sunday and um, I was really surprised to get a message back yesterday to say would you like to come on the podcast so super quick i was impressed awesome thank you <laughs> um the only thing is i am doing this zoom link through my phone and the email i don't know if i can get it up to read my question doug can read it yeah is that okay yeah Doug's you want me to read the, the whole question is it oh, yes is please it, doug if you don't mind really okay long? sure so you're a 39 year old busy mom who's recently gone back to work pretty much full-time and is eating into your usual routine. Uh, I, you've been bulking for a while now, recently started a cut, and have a nutrition coach to guide you through this. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, NEAT is really important. How should I prior prioritize this over lifting weights? I'm currently lifting three times a week, but if I have a low step count, I wonder... If subbing one of the lifting sessions for a big walk is the best way to go, or does it not make much of a difference? I'm fully aware that building muscle really helps with revving up your metabolism to burn more calories in the long run, but it's only 45 minutes to an hour compared to a full day of walking around doing life. My usual step count has always been around seven to 8,000 steps per day, but I've upped it to 10,000 minimum for this fat loss phase. I have about three to five kilograms to lose. My lifting routine is mainly a full body power lifting style, and I change it up every three months or so. I've done MAPS Anabolic, Prime Pro, Performance, and Strong. I'm just going through the motions for the health benefits of lifting weights, and as a long-time lifter with decent muscle mass, I feel I can pull back 
from it for a while to get more steps in. I wouldn't trade strength training for more steps. Definitely not. Unless okay. you like to walk more and you just want to get better yeah, at walking. For enjoyment. Yeah, but I wouldn't trade <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't trade them. Uh the strength training is gonna give you more is it does results. It, does it need to be an either or? Can it uh I mean, cause I would <clears> love I love you following a maps anabolic type of protocol, right? Three days of full body routine. I love what you're doing there. And instead of saying, hey, can I should I cut one day out and then just go go for longer walks? I mean, can you still walk that day for 20 minutes here or there? Like there's there's just too much uh, you know, people think like the workout, right? Of lifting weights. If you compared your full day of walking, like you said, to a day of lifting weights, if you compare compared to the calories you burn in the, the comparing the two, sir, the left the lifting weight session is less in calories than you know ten thousand steps of walking, but it sure. pales into comparison of what you get benefit wise for building muscle and the recovery process and speeding the metabolism up. It's way way yeah. Way what what are these long? What do, so? What does it look like? Seven to eight thousand or ten thousand steps a day on the days you don't lift weights? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, so it's, uh, yeah, sorry. So when I'm not lifting, I'm aiming for, well, every day I'm aiming for at least 10,000. But on the days that I've been lifting and working, I'm barely scraping five, 6,000. So I'm trying to make up. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're saying. No, you're better with the lifting. Yep, yeah, don't trade, with, don't trade them. You're yeah. still better with the lifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. my job... My job is pretty active. I don't have a huge step count though. So, I mean, I'm getting plenty of movement at work. Yeah. I wouldn't, so, worry. I wouldn't worry about it. Like, okay. So when you think of steps or cardio, don't think in terms of fat loss, just think in terms of health. It improves my health. Okay. When it comes to fat loss uh, or, or getting lean sculpted, you know, the aesthetic type of stuff, uh, strength training is the way, is the way to go. Now the, that also improves your health too. So it's all good for you. But if you're trying yeah. to accelerate uh, in terms of, uh, you know, aesthetic results, training strength training for walking will reduce that progress. So, okay. uh, yeah, unless you hate the strength training, you love walking, in which case I'd say go for it. But if it's just Absolutely for the aesthetics, not. yeah, if it's for the aesthetics, don't trade them. No. Definitely not. Okay. No, no. Okay. And, and you can Brilliant. also, where, where are you at uh, calorie wise? Are you tracking calories? Do you know how many you're eating a day? I do, yeah. Um, so my coach has got me on a um, a range between seventeen fifty and nineteen hundred. Okay. okay. How how long you been at on, the moment? How long you been doing that for? Uh, so I'm just going into my third week with her. Oh, okay. Okay, and you're reverse dieting, right? No, the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Re 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 are you increasing calories over time, or are you reducing calories right increasing. now? Increasing. We're reducing. Okay. Oh, you're yeah. you're you're yeah. already in a cut. Yeah, she's in a cut right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but she's only been doing that for three weeks, and she's only got would you say three to three to five kilograms, something like that. To Sounds go? like seven, eight pounds. Seven, yeah, yeah, seven, pounds. yeah, yeah. You're not, you're yeah. not, yeah, you're not, not a huge amount, but I'm not, I'm not losing for uh, aesthetic purposes. I've got some, um, some pull up and push up goals in mind for the end of the year, and I figure being a bit lighter might help with that. Yeah, do, yeah, well, you, for sure. Do you have um a, a bike, a treadmill, stair, anything like that uh, access to? But at your uh, a bike over here and a treadmill over here. Okay, so uh, you know you're close enough to your goal, right? Of like seven, when I'm at the last like five to ten pounds to drop uh, post workout, uh, twelve minutes of of hit cardio afterwards. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that all that. Now I I would only do that when I start to see the progress stall from the calories, right? So I always want to manipulate calories yeah. first. So if I feel like, oh, I'm leaning out, and then then what you'll see is when you're at that calorie intake, your progress will start to stall. Yeah. And then I have two options. I can either create more movement and calorie burn, which would be the hit cardio, or I can reduce calories. When I get a client who's starting to get close to that 1,500 calorie for a female range, that's about as low as I ever really want to push somebody. So in this case, I would probably go, okay, let's add you know, a day or two of 12 minute of hit cardio post-workout and see what that does. Okay. Yeah, that should help. That sounds good. That should help accelerate. Yeah, yeah. I like your goals, by the way. I like the, the the way that you've positioned your goals, and I like the way you train. I think you're doing the right mm -hmm. the right the right way. For yeah, sure. yeah. You're and you're right there. You're right there. Thanks. I've been listening to you guys for a few years now, so you guys have definitely helped me um, navigate the best way, the most healthy way to get to my goals. So thank you. That's awesome. And then you said you yeah. have an active job, but you don't do a lot of steps. What, what kind, do you mind if yeah. I ask what kind of work you do? Sure. Um, I'm a painter and decorator. Oh. Uh, that I've got two jobs actually. So I, I decorate 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I PT Monday and Tuesday. Uh, oh. Sorry, Monday and Friday. Monday yeah, Friday. you got yeah. Your, your activity's good. Yeah. Your activity's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah totally. Yeah. No, you're, you're yeah. You're, you're on your right. You're on the right track for sure. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You got it. Thanks. You know when you're Becky. about and you're you're thinking all these things and they just go through your head and I thought I know I'm going to ask the mind pump guys. Yeah. 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 No, you're doing great. Thank so you so much. Stay the course. Thank you. All right, you Becky. Right. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Yeah, for for just for people listening, when it comes to fat loss, so long as it's appropriate, okay. So that's the context here. Trading strength training for cardio is not a more effective way. No, no, to no, burn body fat. Definitely not. It's a less no. effective way to burn. Yeah. In fact, I typically would take people and do the opposite when people would hire me, as I'd look at their routine and say, "Oh, we're going to take some of that cardio out and yeah. and add more strength training to get you know." Yeah, better you want to maintain the whatever lean muscle mass you have. And you rarely hear us recommend cardio for fat loss but she's three kilograms she's close she's so close yeah. and she's trying to and i can tell she's limited with time right she's she was to the point yeah. where she's thinking i should i trade my lifting for more walking no i wouldn't do that but you a, a 12 minute hit session and this is actually how i would in, introduce it for competing right so it's like what three four weeks and then you get some yeah when i get down to the last three weeks before a show and i'm down to the last five to ten pounds i need to lean out mm -hmm. and i have done no cardio up until this point the first thing I do is I add 12 minutes post-workout. So post-workout, at the end of every workout, I finish it with 12 minutes of, of hit cardio on elliptical mm -hmm, or Stairmaster, mm -hmm. or whatever. It doesn't matter. And then I would – that normally the next week or two, that would actually kickstart, accelerate the fat loss a little bit more. And then only if uh, that stalled before the show would I add any more of like steady state outside of that. But a lot of times that would be enough to get me ready Perfect. for the show. Speaking of fat loss, we have a free fat loss guide. You can get it at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. <laughs>